Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Okapi, also known as the Forest Giraffe, is an unusual artiodactyl native only to the tropical forests of the Congo. Although the Okapi has striped markings reminiscent of zebras, it is most closely related to the giraffe, being one of only two living genera within the family Giraffidae. The Okapi stands about 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder and has a typical body length of around 2.5 meters. Its weight ranges from 200 to 350 kilograms as an adult. Its coat is a chocolate to reddish brown, much in contrast with the white horizontal stripes and rings on the legs and white ankles. Male okapis have short, distinct, horn-like knobs on the top of their heads called ossicones. Okapis are primarily diurnal, but may be active for a few hours after dark. They are essentially solitary, coming together only to breed. Okapis are herbivorous, feeding on tree leaves and buds, grasses, ferns, fruits and fungi. The okapi can be easily distinguished from its nearest extant relative, the giraffe. It is much smaller and shares more external similarities with deer and bovids than with the giraffe. Morphological similarities shared between the giraffe and the okapi include a similar gait. Both use a pacing gait stepping simultaneously with the front and hind leg on the same side of the body, unlike other ungulates that walk by moving alternate legs, and a long black tongue, which is longer in the okapi, and useful in picking buds and leaves, as well as for grooming. They have overlapping home ranges, and typically occur at densities of about 0.6 animals per square kilometer. The male is protective of his territory, but allows females to pass through the domain to forage. Although generally tranquil, the okapi can kick and butt with its head to show aggression. As the vocal cords are poorly developed, vocal communication is mainly restricted to three sounds, chuffs, moans, and bleats. Individuals may engage in a behavior known as the flamen response, a visual expression in which the animal curls back its upper lips displays its teeth and inhales through the mouth for a few seconds. The only natural predator of the okapi, aside from humans, is the leopard, and even then the cats will mainly target calves. The okapi is endemic to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where it occurs north and east of the Congo River. It ranges from the Maiko National Park northward to the Ituri Rainforest, then through the river basins of Ruby, Lake Tele and Ebola, the okapi inhabits canopy forests at altitudes of 500 to 1,500 metres. It occasionally uses seasonally inundated areas, but does not occur in gallery forests, swamp forests, and habitats disturbed by human settlements. In the wet season, it visits rocky areas that offer forage uncommon elsewhere, using their black, incredibly flexible 18-inch long tongues to forage for food. Although the okapi was unknown to the Western world until the early 20th century, its presence was known and recorded in the ancient world, with the oldest known representation of the animal occurring on the facade of Adapana at Persepolis. The bas-relief carvings show the arrival of the Ethiopian delegation to the Persian kings, with the men leading a small giraffe-like animal with a comparatively short neck, which has been identified by experts as being an okapi. For years, Europeans in Africa had heard of an animal that they had come to call the African Unicorn. The animal was brought to prominent European attention by speculation on its existence found in press reports covering Henry Morton Stanley's journeys in 1887. In his travel log of exploring the Congo, Stanley mentioned a kind of donkey that the natives called the Ati, which scholars later identified as being the Okapi. Explorers may have seen the fleeting view of the striped back end of the animal as it fled through the bushes, leading to the speculation that the okapi was some sort of rainforest zebra. When the British Special Commissioner in Uganda, Sir Harry Johnson, discovered some pygmy inhabitants of the Congo being abducted by a showman for an exhibition, he rescued them and promised to return them to their homes. The pygmies fed Johnston's curiosity about the animal mentioned in Stanley's book. Johnson was puzzled by the okapi tracks the natives showed him. While he had been expected to be on the trail of some sort of forest-dwelling horse, 
the tracks were of a cloven hoofed beast. Though Johnson did not see an okapi himself, he did manage to obtain pieces of striped skin and eventually a skull. From this skull, the okapi was correctly classified as a relative of the giraffe. In 1901, the species was formally recognised as Okapia johnstoni. The generic name Okapia derives from the Mbuba name Okapi, or the related Lesse Caro name Oapi. Remains of the carcass were later sent to London by Johnston, and when they arrived there it became a media sensation in 1901. Sclater presented a painting of the Okapi before the Zoological Society of London that depicted its features with some clarity. Much confusion arose regarding the taxonomical status of the newly discovered animal. Sir Harry Johnston himself called it a Heladotherium, or a relative of other extinct giraffids. Based on the description of the Okapi by pygmies, who reported it as a horse, Sclater named the species Equus Johnstoni. Subsequently, Zoologist Ray Lancaster declared that the Okapi represented an unknown genus of giraffid, which he placed in its own genus, Okapia. In 1902, Swiss zoologist Charles Emmanuel Forsyth Major suggested the inclusion of O. Johnstoni in the extinct giraffid subfamily Paleotragonae. However, the species was placed in its own subfamily, Okapianae, by Swedish paleontologist Berger Bolin in 1926, mainly due to the lack of a shingulum, a major feature of the paleotrugids. In 1986, Okapia was finally established as a sister genus of Giraffa on the basis of cladistic analysis. The two living members of Giraffidae are merely a tiny remnant of a much larger group of hoofed mammals known as Giraffoidea. Once a highly diverse and widespread group during the Miocene and Pliocene, these animals suffered greatly during the Pleistocene. Giraffoidea includes the basal Climacoceratids, a family of superficially deer-like animals which lived in the Miocene epoch in Africa. They are close to the ancestry of giraffids, with some genera, such as Prolibitherium, originally classified as giraffes. They differ from their modern relatives by possessing shorter necks and much more elaborate, antler-like ossicones. In the genus Climacoceras, these antler horns were crescent-shaped and covered in sharp, thorn-like projections, while Prolibitherium was a highly sexually dimorphic animal, with males owning a set of large, leaf-shaped ossicones above the eyes. Another group of giraffoids is actually still alive today, although they don't resemble giraffes at all, the pronghorns of North America. Much like the Okapi, there is only a single genus of pronghorn, Antillocapra americana, which is native to central North America and Mexico. Despite resembling deer or antelopes, these speedy herbivores are the sister group of Giraffidae, from which they diverged during the early Miocene. Known technically as Antillocaprids, the group evolved in North America, where they filled a similar niche to that of the bovids that evolved in the Old World. During the Miocene and Pliocene, they were a diverse and successful group. Some had horns with bizarre shapes, or had four or even six horns covering their skulls. Examples include Osbornoceros, with smooth, slightly curved horns, Paracosaurix, with flattened horns that widened into fork-like tips, and Ramoceros with fan-shaped horns. Then we come to the family Giraffidae itself, which once contained up to eight subfamilies, of which all but two are now extinct. Many of these animals quite closely resembled the modern Okapi, albeit with differing ossicones and lacked the extreme necks of modern giraffes. Some, such as the genus Shivatherium, were also rather robust and heavily built, being among the largest ruminants of all time. Native to Africa and the Indian subcontinent, Shivatherium originated during the late Miocene, around 7 million years ago in Africa, and survived through to the late early Pleistocene. Shivatherium giganteum remains have been recovered from the Himalayan foothills, dating to around 1 million years ago. Suggestions have been made that Shivatherium mauraceum may have gone extinct as recently as 8,000 years ago, as depictions that resemble it are known from ancient rock paintings in the Sahara and central West India. But these claims are not substantiated by fossil evidence, 
and the depictions likely represent other animals. Shivatherium resembled the modern Okapi but was far larger and more heavily built, being around 2.2 metres tall at the shoulder, 3 metres in total height and with a weight of up to 500 kilograms. A newer estimate has come up with an estimated body mass of about 1,250 kilograms. This would make Shivatherium one of the largest known ruminants, rivaling the modern giraffe and the largest bovines. This weight estimate is thought to be an underestimate, however, as it does not take into account the large horns possessed by males of the species. Shivatherium had a wide, antler-like pair of ossicones on its head, and the second pair of shorter ossicones above its eyes. Its shoulders were very powerful to support the neck muscles required to lift the heavy head. A dental wear analysis of Shivatherium from the early Pliocene of South Africa found that the teeth were brachiodont, but had a higher hypsodonty than giraffes, and that it was best classified as a mixed feeder, being able to both graze and browse. Older reconstructions depicted this animal as being rather moose-like, but these are now thought to be inaccurate. That being said, the family Samotherianae were actually somewhat moose or deer-like, with rounded muzzles which suggest grazing habits in open grasslands of the Miocene and Pliocene Afro-Eurasia. The genus Samotherium itself is best known from well-preserved remains found on the Greek island of Samos, giving the animal its name. The Greek species Samotherium major possessed a neck that was of intermediate length between that of Okapes and modern giraffes. It was a close relative of the large and robust Shansi Therium from late Miocene China. Some ancient giraffids possessed much larger and more elaborate ossicones than the Okapi, such as the four-horned Giraffocerix and the highly distinctive-looking Injana Therium, with its two pairs of wing-like ossicones sticking directly out above the eyes. The Spanish genus Decenotherium possessed two backward-curving ossicones and an elongated, narrow muzzle suggesting of a browsing diet. Meanwhile, some genera, including the Afro-Eurasian Paleotragus, were more closely related to modern giraffes and okapes. In life, Paleotragus was an imposing animal, resembling an almost exact hybrid of the two living genera, best described as looking like either a three meter tall, short-necked giraffe or a gargantuan okapi. An oft-cited ancestor of giraffes was Bolinia, which first appeared in southeastern Europe and lived 9 to 7 million years ago in the late Miocene. It closely resembled modern giraffes, having a long neck and legs and similar ossicones and dentition. Bolinia entered China and northern India in response to climate change. From there, the genus Giraffa evolved and, around 7 million years ago, entered Africa. Further climate changes caused the extinction of the Asian giraffes, which lived in India and Pakistan until the Pleistocene, while the African giraffes survived and radiated into new species. Living giraffes appear to have arisen around one million years ago in eastern Africa during the Pleistocene. Some biologists suggest the modern giraffes descended from Giraffa jumai. Others find Giraffa gracilis a more likely candidate. Giraffa jumai was a larger and more heavily built animal, while Giraffa gracilis was smaller and more lightly built. The main driver of evolution of the giraffes is believed to have been the changes from extensive forests to more open habitats, which began 8 million years ago. During this time, tropical plants disappeared and were replaced by arid C4 plants, and a dry savanna emerged across eastern and northern Africa and western India. Some researchers have hypothesized that this new habitat, coupled with a different diet, including acacia species, may have exposed the giraffe ancestors to toxins that caused higher mutation rates and a higher rate of evolution. The coat patterns of modern giraffes may also have coincided with these habitat changes. As for the okapi itself, the animal's own classification was long thought to be rather mysterious. No close fossil relatives were known, and the genus was placed in its own subfamily, Ocarpionae. This was until 2010, when a newly described giraffid, known as Africanocerix, was found to be a close relative of the Ocarpi. Due to their limited habitat preferences and range, 
It is not a surprise to learn that Okapia johnstoni is classified as endangered by the IUCN. Major threats include habitat loss due to logging and human settlement. Extensive hunting for bush meat and skin and illegal mining have also led to population declines. A threat that has emerged quite recently is the presence of illegal armed groups around protected areas, inhibiting conservation and monitoring actions. A small population occurs north of the Virunga National Park, but is bereft of protection due to the presence of armed groups in the region. The Okapi Conservation Project, established in 1987, works towards the conservation of the Okapi, as well as the growth of the indigenous Mbuti people. In November 2011, the White Oak Conservation Centre and Jacksonville Zoo Gardens hosted an international meeting of the Okapi Species Survival Plan, which was attended by representatives from zoos from the US, Europe and Japan. The aim was to discuss the management of captive Okapis and arrange support for conservation. Many zoos in North America and Europe currently have the animals in captivity as part of the international breeding program. As the last members of their subfamily, we can only hope that the conservation efforts can protect these shy, elegant animals from suffering a similar fate to their numerous extinct relatives. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Rhynchosaurs, the strange beaked toothed herbivorous archosauromorphs from the Triassic. See you again soon. Cheerio.